how can you match audio loops to the song tempo and how can you do it manually or automatically? I show you a lot of options. Here is a short track. Well, this sounds interesting because the yellow part has been recorded on my own in 126. This is the song tempo, but the percussion loop has got 112 BPM and the next both loop are in 132. So this is the reason why it sounds chaotic. Let's mute the orange and the blue one. So we stay with the drums and the percussion part. Okay, now we want to match the green one to the 126. We can do this with a direct offline processing. So I press F7. When you don't know the key command, just go to audio, direct offline processing, or you go to audio, process, time stretch, and now you see we are in the direct offline processing. So every way goes to the direct offline processing. And now, we got here to type in the original tempo, 126, no, 112, and here 126. So this is the original tempo, and here is our destination. And now you see it's done. But for this way, you got to do a lot of steps. It's a little bit complicated, so I show you a more easy way. And now I go to the track version and duplicate this one. So the first one is called original, and uh, let's do it right. And you can call the other one edit or time stretch or what else. The reason is when I do the time stretching with the way I show you in three seconds, you can't go back to the original length. When you use the direct offline processing, you can go back, but the way I show you now, you can't go back. And the great thing is when you change something, let's do this and this and you don't know what was the original, just go to the track version and go to here and you can edit the original. So you can't always do uh, the undo. Now, time stretch in a very easy way. I go here to the tools, I press and I hold the mouse key. You see, we've got three different options, normal scoring, sizing moves contents or sizing applies time stretch. So we use the last option and you can see that the mouse, the error looks in a different way. We've got the error and this watch and you can choose those tools in another way. Just press number one at your keyboard and you see it changes. And now we can change the length of the part. So I show it without the grid. I do this, this, and you can see it's time stretching in a very easy way. And that's the thing. There is no option to say, okay, I want to go to the original length for this. We got to do this track version. Okay, now I activate the grid. Go to here and let's listen. Yeah, works. And there is something I would like you to experiment. Try different algorithm. Now we choose tape. Can you hear the difference? So I switch between tape and time. Now it's getting higher because we've been faster. Now it's being higher. 
It's the same thing as when you use a vinyl or a tape. Now let's do the opposite. We slower the tempo. I love this algorithm. It's always great. Now we've done this. And next thing is we want to change the tempo. We want to change it to 130. So uh, let's do it. Hmm. And you see uh, something changed here. So we don't want to see uh, this, guys. You see here. The starting point changed and the length. Well, perhaps it's a bug. Well, it isn't. <laughs> so let's move it to here and listen again. Now it's out of sync and you can see the length now is different. So let's go back to 126. There are two things we've got to change. One thing is here at the audio part we are the linear mode at the linear mode we always stay at the same time code for example 10 seconds and i've done a video about this button and when you use this or this one so the drums are always here in the music mode they are staying at the same bars and beats and now we get to do this here again so they match so this one always stays here but okay let's try it now we change the tempo go to 130 and you see and you hear okay the start is perfect but not the length. So we go back to 126. And now I convert this one to a new audio track. Now comes the next trick. I create a double click. And here I activate the music in road. Go to this. And here is the BPM. We now, we uh, match it to uh, this tempo 126 so it matches and uh, that's it so when i change it now to 140 you see it works let's get to 160 But now I've got two more loops. But let's imagine you've got a lot of clips in 132 BPM and you've got to edit each one and to set it to the musical mode, set the right BPM and so on. This takes a lot of time. There's a faster way. Now I go to the audio pool and I know these are the audio clips. Now. I want to change the tempo and the algorithm. So I go to here and see the musical mode and the tempo. And now I can say they all got 132 and activate the musical mode. Perfect. Let's work with MediaBay. For the trick I'll show you now, you've got to use perfectly edited samples. So this is not a great edited sample. I love the sound, but you hear it's not perfectly edited for loop. Let's listen to other samples. Yeah. This is great for loop. So what I like are these three buttons here. Every time I press another loop, it plays automatically. 
But the magic begins with the second and the third button. When I press a loop now, it plays in the song tempo automatically and it goes on. Now I press play in Cubase. So Cubase starts the loop in the media bay, the media bay plays in the exact tempo of the song. And the great thing is it starts at the same position. So now I started at bar one, but now let's go in bar one and beat two. So it doesn't matter where you start because Cubase matches everything. And now I can listen or preview to different loops in the media bay doing bring the song. Okay, let's take this loop and I want to activate the grid here. Now drag and drop it into Cubase. And the great thing is Cubase activated the musical mode in the track and here it activated the music mode in the sample, set the tempo to the perfect BPM. So now it changes the tempo every time. <laughs> This are a lot of ways how to match the tempo of loops or audio files to the song tempo manually or automatically. When you like this video, please give me a thumb up, would make me very happy. When you get some more questions or suggestions, just leave a comment. Please subscribe to the channel and add the video at the left top corner. You see seven tricks how you can export faster your tracks. See you the next time. Bye.